Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Vic. In today's video, I'm going to show you some flat pack basics. But before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about why flat packs are pretty awesome, in my opinion. First of all, I started using flat packs because I wanted the latest software without having to run a bleeding edge distribution like a Fedora or a Manjaro or an Arch. So I usually end up running something like Ubuntu. And these days, because of my hardware, I choose Pop! OS. The second reason why I love flat packs is that they are cross distribution. And that means that if you have a bunch of flat pack applications installed in your system, and let's say you wanted to distro hop. So if you're in Ubuntu and you wanted to go to Fedora, for example, when you finally set up your Fedora system, your flat pack applications will work right out of the box. No reinstallation required, just as long as you don't erase your flat pack installation directory. And I can show you where that lives during this tutorial. So the third reason why I love flat packs is that whenever I do a reinstallation of my system, all the settings for my flat pack applications are actually preserved. So if I customize the user interface or the keyboard shortcuts of a particular app, those customizations will carry over even though I've reinstalled my system. So enough about that enough about how awesome flat packs are let me show you how to get started using flat packs so if you're a linux beginner you might go ahead and open up a web browser and i might go to flatpack.org but actually this is not the place to go it's a little bit confusing so this will tell you a little bit about what flat packs are so essentially they're sandboxed applications so that means that they ship with all the dependencies and it runs separately so it doesn't mess with your system at all. So when you uninstall it, it doesn't touch your system. It doesn't mess with any configurations. So this is actually really convenient and it's really good just in case like you want to run applications, but you don't want your system to break in the process if something goes wrong. But the place to actually go is flathub.org. Now Flathub is, I would say it's the official repository for many applications that get shipped in the Flatpak format. So here you can see popular applications. We can search for an application. But before we get into any of that, we're going to have to set up Flatpak. If you're like me and you're running Pop! OS, Flatpak is already pre-configured and pre-installed. But if you're running something else, then we want to go into quick setup. Now we've got a list of distributions here where we can get some instructions on how to get Flatpak installed. I'm just going to click on Ubuntu. So step number one is simply to type in this command. So sudo apt install Flatpak. So I'm just going to copy this going to open up a terminal. Again, if you're using Linux, the terminal is your friend. Don't be afraid. We'll paste that command. Actually, if I do this, it should already tell me that it's already installed. Now, step number two allows us to install the software plugin, which allows us to look for flat packs within the software package manager for Ubuntu. In this case, I'm going to recommend skipping this step because of this warning here. It's going to cause some conflicts with the graphical package manager. I would add step number three. So just go ahead, same thing, copy this, open up a terminal, paste and run this command. Restart your computer and we should be off to the races. Now that your computer has restarted, we'll go back to flathub.org. We're going to use this as our discovery website for many of the applications that we want to install. So let's go through an example. Now, one of my favorite applications is Kden Live. When we click on the page, we're going to get some information about what this application does. We can click to see the website link. We can see when it was last updated and the latest version number. Now, when we scroll to the bottom, we're going to see the command line instructions for installing Flatpak. Flatpak install, and then the repository, Flathub, and then the name of the application. Now, let's go ahead and install Kden Live. So let's open up a terminal. And what we can do is we can right away just copy this command and paste it into our terminal. And it will look for the match and install it will ask us to proceed with the changes, yes or no. 
But alternatively, if you didn't want to do that, if you just wanted to say Flatpak install Caden Live, it's actually going to look for a match and it's going to tell me that it's found an application. So it's going to ask, do I want to install this application? Well, there's only really one Caden Live, so I'm just going to press yes. And it's going to give me the same output as the direct command that we had copied and pasted over here. So let's go ahead and install this. Press yes, press enter. It's going to download the files and whatever it needs to run Caden Live. Okay, we've finished our installation over here. So let's go ahead and launch Caden Live. And here we are. Let's just double check that we've got the latest version 22.04.2. So that's how easy it is to install a Flatpak application. Now, before I start talking about uninstallation, the other cool thing about Flatpak is that if we don't like the latest version of a software, we can downgrade to an earlier version. Using Caden Live, I'm going to show you how to downgrade to a previous version. The command that we're going to need to type in is Flatpak remote dash info double dash log. And we're going to need the remote name and the name of the application. So I'm going to copy that, go back to my terminal, paste it and press enter. Now what this is going to do is that it's going to give me a log of all of the versions and all of the commits that were given for Caden Live. This is quite a long list. So I'm going to scroll up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new terminal. Just put this on the side. I know that the previous version was 21.12.3. So I'm just going to look for it here and here it is. It says in this commit, it updated to version 21.12.3. Now in order to downgrade, we're going to type in flatpak update dash dash commit equals the commit that we're looking for, which is going to be this one, which is the update to 21.12.3. Copy that, paste, and then we want the name of the application. So in this case, it's the application ID over here. So we'll copy this and then paste it at the end of our command. It looks like we're gonna need a space here. There we go, press enter. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna proceed with these changes. I will say yes. Now that that process is finished, let's check Caden Live. And as you can see here, we have successfully downgraded to 21.12.3. That I think is pretty amazing. And how easy was that? It's pretty awesome, right? So if you don't like the latest version of Caden Live, too buggy for you, it has a feature that's missing, you can downgrade to the previous version. Now let's talk about updating applications. So there are a couple of really easy ways. One is doing a global update. So if you wanna do a global update, all you do is flat pack update and it's gonna check for updates and it's gonna tell you that it's got all of these ready for upgrade. So all you need to do is click yes and then it will upgrade everything that has updates. If you remember, we installed Caden Live and we don't wanna update it to the most recent version. So we don't just wanna undo all of the work that we just did right now. Let's click no on this. And what you can do actually is you can just update some of these programs one by one. So that's another cool thing about Flatpak is that you don't have to update everything all at once. So let's try that. So we've got GIMP here, which has an available update. So let's copy the ID and I'm going to issue the command Flatpak update to just update GIMP. It's going to tell me, oh, do you just want to update GIMP? Sure do. Now our GIMP should be fully up to date. So let's go ahead and open GIMP over here. Let's check the latest version, 2.10.32. We'll go back to Flat Hub. We'll search for GIMP. Let's see what the latest version is, 2.10.32. That is the latest version. So that matches. So now we've learned that we could do a global update. We could do a singular update. Now there's supposed to be a way to mask an application in order to exclude it from the global update. So let's say, for example, we want to keep Caden Live to the previous version and we don't want to update it to the latest version. Unfortunately, I tried this command and it actually didn't work. So when I did the global update, it still updated Caden Live to the most recent version. So the best thing to do 
let's say if you want to run a global update but you want to preserve the previous version you want to take note of the command that you issued to downgrade the package so in this case we did flat pack update commit number and then this so what i would do is just simply copy that paste it onto a terminal or write it down as a note in your notebook and just save it so that you can refer to it and run the command again after you do the global update so now that we've learned how to install an application and do the updating downgrading let's say we hate the application and we want to remove it so it's really easy you just do flat pack uninstall plus the name of the application in this case Caden live we can type it in like this it'll ask us oh i found this one is this correct click yes now if you want to be more specific what you can do is you just go back to the application on flat hub you scroll down we look for the application id copy this go back to our terminal type in the command flat pack uninstall plus the name of the application press enter yes just as easy as that now lastly we're going to talk a little bit about some maintenance so for example if certain things had gone wrong and you don't know how to fix it we can have flat pack repair itself so we can do flat pack repair click yes it's gonna try to figure out what's wrong with itself and repair everything but right now i don't have anything wrong with it so it's just returned nothing another thing that we could do is if we want to save a little bit of disk space and we want to uninstall some of the unused run times we can do flat pack uninstall dash dash unused it's going to look for all of the run times that are no longer used we can click yes to that and it's going to remove everything and the final tip that i will give you in this flat pack tutorial is that as a flat pack you can install something called flat seal so flat seal allows you to manage the flat pack permissions i've already got flat seal installed into my system so let's go ahead and run this so we can see what it looks like so we've got all the Flatpak applications installed in the system listed here. Because they're sandbox, some of them might be limited. So for example, in Inkscape, go in Inkscape, and by default, it doesn't have GPU acceleration. So what I can do is I can turn that on. Uh, it doesn't have shared memory, I can turn it on. A lot of these things, I'm not entirely sure what they exactly do. So uh, this is just play you know play and see how it reacts with your system but most of the time sometimes um, some of the flatpak applications won't have access to your user files so like in inkscape i want to be able to save the files that i'm using into my home directory so sometimes that can be turned off by default um, you simply just turn that on if you wanted to have access to your system or host files you can turn this on as well i like to turn that off i don't want it messing with my system files in addition to that, if we get lost and we've changed about a bunch of settings here, what we can actually do is reset this. So now this is the default uh, configuration that Inkscape came out with out of the box. So as you can see here, this has been toggled back on. I'm going to toggle that off, click on user files on again, and I'm give it permission to use GPU acceleration and shared memory if we have it. That's pretty much it. And thank you guys for listening to another tutorial. I hope that you found this very helpful and awesome, especially for someone that's really just starting to get into flat packs. And if you want more content like this, please support the channel, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.